Well, what Bitcoin is doing, it's doing regulation. You know, like in general, Bitcoin introduced technology regulation. Invested in Ethereum and so on, then we invested in Polkadot, Cosmos, you know, like yeah. And Solana was one of the projects that we invested in the seed stage. We could in general stay in Bitcoin. Like a lot of Bitcoin maximalists believe that the God Satoshi Nakamoto to solve all our issues, you know, like but this is a craziness, you know, like Bitcoin is a calculator. Or like it is a meme coin, you know, like I'm not big believer in Bitcoin, I think it can change, evolve. Ethereum pushed Solana forward, Solana pushed Ethereum forward, but who is the winner is uh, like uh, people. The fees on rollups going down, and if the fees on Ethereum going down, it means that we'll have more and more different type of applications that can find a product market fit by using blockchains. Hello and welcome to Epicenter, the show which talks about the technologies, projects, and people driving decentralization and the blockchain revolution. I'm Brian Crane, and today it's my uh, special pleasure to talk with Konstantin Lomaschuk. Uh, he's the co-founder and managing partner of Cyberfund, but he's done a lot of other stuff as well in the crypto space. And, you know, he's been tremendously successful and influential as an investor and entrepreneur. So really excited to speak with Konstantin. So just before we get in with Constantine, I'd like to tell you a few words about our sponsors this week. If you're looking to stake your crypto with confidence, look no further than Course One. More than 150,000 delegators, including institutions like BitGo, Pantera Capital and Ledger, trust Course One with their assets. They support over 50 blockchains and are leaders in governance on networks like Cosmos, ensuring your stake is responsibly managed. Thanks to their advanced MEV research, you can also enjoy the highest staking rewards. You can stake directly from your preferred wallet, set up a white label node, restake your assets on Eigenlayer or Symbiotic, or use the SDK for multi chain staking in your app. Learn more at chorus.one and start staking today. This episode is proudly brought to you by Gnosis, a collective dedicated to advancing a decentralized future. Gnosis leads innovation with circles. Gnosis Pay and Metri reshaping open banking and money. With Hashi and Gnosis VPN, they're building a more resilient, privacy focused internet. If you're looking for an L1 to launch your project, Gnosis Chain offers the same development environment as Ethereum with lower transaction fees. It's supported by over 200,000 validators, making Gnosis Chain a reliable and credibly neutral foundation for your applications. Gnosis DAO drives Gnosis governance where every voice matters. Join the Gnosis community in the Gnosis DAO forum today. Deploy on the EVM compatible Gnosis chain or secure the network with just one GNO and affordable hardware. Start your decentralization journey today at Gnosis.io. So yeah, so Constantine, I, I actually remember still very well when I met Constantine. So this was in 2017 when I was a COO of Tendermint, and uh, this was sort of around the time of the Tendermint, uh, the, the fundraiser for um, the Cosmos Hub and for Atom. And then uh, I went with Jay to a conference in Bucharest, and he gave this talk about Cosmos Network and interoperability. And I had sort of the impression that most people were like, what is this? I don't understand it. It doesn't make it. And they were kind of just couldn't connect much, but then I remember meeting uh, Constantine and uh, his partner at the time, Dima, and they were like, we've been following it. We were like, this is cool. And then, of course, they yeah became in involved in the Cosmos ecosystem and have done a tremendous amount since then and, and had already done a tremendous amount before that. I'm maybe curious, how did this all start for you? How did you get involved in crypto in the first place? Uh, yeah, first of all, hi, Brian, as always, happy to see you, you know, like, and uh, uh, yeah, I remember the day, you know, like 2017, when I <clears throat> we met you and, uh, and Jay, you know, like, and in general, when all this Cosmos, all these uh, ideas started, you know, like, and uh, before the, the Genesis, before, you know, like any production code, you know, like, and it was uh, really like a uh, uh, all about inspiration, you know, like I, I saw how your eyes were, you know, like in general, how, how, how much light it was, you know, like, and in general, it was a great energy and where you really were like, and Jay especially was a maximalist, you know, like tried to say, guys, this should work in this way. And uh, 
Uh, yeah, so we were really like fans of Cosmos, you know, like fans of Cosmos Vision. I, th I think, you know, like Cosmos did one of their like biggest impact, you know, like in general in blockchain development. Yeah, and I was super excited to meet you guys, you know, like in general, happy to know you all this time, you know, like we did a lot of collaboration during this time, you know, like, and I really always enjoy, you know, like our meetings. So if we speak about my, uh, you know, like our previous, how I joined, you know, like I joined in the 2014, in general, I first time heard about Bitcoin in 2011 from my friend Dima, you know, like in generally Dima, uh, did some mining initially, you know, like her uh, of Bitcoin, and he sent me, let's do mining together. And I, in general, I, I thought it was a Ponce skin, you know, like, so I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't the, the most smart guy in the room, you know, like, so I didn't got all these ideas. I didn't get all these ideas. And I, I tried to, in general, uh, so, and I didn't have time back then. So in 2011, I did some retail stuff, you know, like, and did some business and I was fully like inside of this business. And in 2014, in, initially I was born in Russia, you know, like in 2014, 2013, you know, like I already had some business that operate without me. And I figured out that uh, in general, I don't want to be connected with a country, you know, like any country in general, and also hold country risk, you know, like because in general, the trend of, uh, I mean, like administrative economy was not good for me, you know, like, and I feel that I took too much risk if I will build a business in this country. And so I start to research in general what I can do and how, and in general, I want to move to more IT uh, uh, development, you know, like, and uh, in general, Dima come back to Kaliningrad, the place where I was, uh, and he was born, you know, like, and uh, in general, he lose almost all his Bitcoins on Mad Gox, you know, like, and uh, we start, and in general, you know, like he started Cyber Fund with uh, his friends, you know, like, and partners, and I, and he peeled me, you know, like, so I had some free time, so he told me about the blockchain, in general, how it works, how it's different from, you know, like architecture perspective, and uh, how hash function cryptography works, you know, like, so I read the white paper of Bitcoin, and of course I were inspired, you know, like, and back then what I can say is that, you know, like, uh, I, it was, how to say, great time because we tried to predict how this market will evolve, you know, like, and I can say that we hallucinate a lot, you know, like, so um, people say that LLMs are hallucinating now, you know, like, or AI, but I think people, when we, they try to predict the future, they can, in general, hallucinate even more. But what we really f figure out is that, you know, like, I mean, that is a healthy for each person on the planet because I mean, what blockchain is give is give equal access to each person, you know, like, and there, yeah. And so we did a report, you know, like about blockchains uh, uh, called cybernetic economy report. In general, I joined cyber fund, I bought a share, like a partner share in it, you know, like, and we start to build our products, you know, like initially a fund uh, that invests in crypto assets. That was one of the most profitable fund in early days. And uh, start to, in general, research and figure out what is the difference between Bitcoins and all other assets. 90% of them were forks, you know, like Jets copies, like Dogecoin, you know, like still exist, like meme coins, you know, like, and some of them were really innovative, like BitShares back then, like uh, uh, Ethereum, you know, like that only started like, uh, uh, of course, you know, like, for example, Jay hate BitShares, you know, like because of the delegation for proof of stake. But I mean, all of these people try to, in general, reinvent or like invent something new. And it was super inspiring, you know, like, and so after I joined crypto, you know, like I didn't work even a day, you know, like it's my hobby. It's super interesting. And I always try to focus on this 1% of technology. And I found out that I've, or I find out that it is so many clever people, much cleverer than I am. And, you know, like we're doing so interesting stuff. That's why I started to invest money, you know, like in it. So I bought my first Bitcoins in 2014. Then a bear market started. So until 2016, it was a bear market. So my money uh, only like going down, you know, like during that time. But I reinvested these assets to, you know, like initial ICO of uh, Ethereum. Then I met you guys, in Cosmos, Definity, Polkadot, some other projects that initially started. And so, you know, like, 
in 2018, I will try to be short, you know, like we closed Cyber Fund and Satoshi Fund, you know, like why? Because in general, our partners make a decision, you know, like to, to do own stuff. And for example, Dima is now like on Bali, you know, like and be building some network states, small network states projects. So he bought a Volcano, you know, like and in general, building own stuff. Uh, and also like uh, deep dived in AI, you know, like Marina is building like EVM on Solana, so Neon, you know, like, and there one other guy, you know, like my good friend who was initial, he just retired, you know, like, and I start to keep building, you know, like, and in 2018, when we made with you again, you know, like, so I, I started like a P2P.org, you know, like a company. Why? Because I want to keep this blockchain decentralized, you know, like censorship resistant, because if it will be run by 10 exchanges, I mean, it will be just a database. And it means that we, what we all did, you know, like we just spent our time for nothing, you know, like if the, all these non-blockchains will be non-decentralized. And in general, you know, like it start to be a pretty big company now, you know, like our, yeah, P2P.org is as a, like uh, Chorus and other, uh, one of the leading staking companies, you know, like, and uh, um, yeah, in 2020, as you know, like we also like did our spin-off of LIDAR, you know, like and in 2023 only we launched CyberFund as an investment company. So like to in general keep, you know, like contributing to the cybernetic economy, to the economy uh, that in, in general will be equal, healthy, accessible for each person on our, that planet. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, like we still keep doing what we did in 2014, researching, investing and building. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of things we can go into more detail. I mean, one thing that stands out, I mean, you had the cyber fund uh, for a long time, right? Or I mean, it existed even uh, before you, but it ex mm -hmm. and, and so the, and you mentioned cybernetic economy. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, in general, it's a meme. <laughs> so, uh, but what does this mean? Uh, you know, like when we try in 2014, you know, like, when we, we even, I think, wrote, wrote a small book, you know, like about that, but we try to figure out, you know, like how the future economy will work, you know, like with the new technologies, with open source, with our, in general, op what open source sources show us, it's not about capitalism, you know, like, so when you open source your code, you not maximize your return. In general, you maximize your return in game theory when other people are contributing, you know, like, and this type of activity is not clear and are how to say uh, capitalistic. And what we try to say is that, you know, like uh, we call it a meme because in general, what we believe, we believe that it will be economy, that it will be more efficient one day. And uh, it will be efficient because we will, got, uh, we will have more dat data, we will have more computation, we will have AI, we will have blockchains, we will have open markets. And in general, we will have access to everyone, like internet give access to everyone, you know, like in blockchain give access, for example, for financial products and more. And then AI give access to intelligence, you know, like, and you create a more efficient economy. And uh, we call it cybernetic economy. In our first economy, cybernetic economy report was about the in general blockchains, but we also mentioned that we look on blockchains like uh, artificial intelligent networks because you know like how you can kill bitcoin or is the ethereum is there how to say organization can you stop it you know like or maybe it's new type of artificial intelligence you know like that match us as people you know like uh, as an agency you know like and so we and we figure out that we call it cybernetic economy and we made the decision that we want to facilitate it in general our mission current mission of cyber fund is accelerate this cybernetic economy. What does it mean that, I mean, for example, what we did with the Ethereum when we found white paper, we allocate our capital to it, you know, like, and now we allocate in capital to many others, you know, like companies like Solana, uh, you know, in early days, like Celestia, Angular, many others. And in the same time, and does it ma make economy better for humanity and for people? Yes, because now everybody has access to coordinate finance on top of in shared layer and have the same uh, financial terms. Everyone on the planet. So is it big impact? Yes. I mean, in general, uh, Ethereum Foundation delivered it, you know, like, and what, but what was our next impact? We built uh, in general, like our, uh, our initial version of LIDA, liquid staking solution to keep Ethereum decentralized and censorship resistant for all these 
people, you know, like, and I think that we want to do it again and again by allocating capital or by building our products in general, help, you know, like in general, I, I believe that cybernetic economy happened in any way. So, you know, like uh, with, uh, with us or not with us, but what we want, we just want to influence on probability. One, one probability is that it will happen faster. And another probability is that, you know, like uh, that it will be more healthy for each person on the planet. And yeah, that is our mission and, and our vision. I mean, you mentioned you have, uh, I mean, I think you told me outside also you have like a, you know, retail business you started, then you started Peter, Peter or for example, you started a whole bunch of like, uh, other projects. How does that, how do you go about it? Like, how would you describe yourself as an entrepreneur? How do you, how do you know, like, okay, this is an idea I want to pursue. And like, what, what does it look like? Especially kind of like in the early stages as you get something off the ground. Yeah, I think, you know, like, first of all, entrepreneurs are a really important part of our society. They take risk, you know, like, and in general build something. In my case, you know, like, I think uh, uh, it's, it's in my DNA and maybe it is uh, even my problem. I'm a serial entrepreneur, you know, like, and, uh, uh, I, and I think that to be an entrepreneur is really hard. And that's why I really love every builder, you know, like, like uh, for example, you work in the, the, like in Tendermint and Coros and some, something else, you know, like, so in general, it's take a lot of energy and you always uh, feel you're not good, that you don't deliver or like you as the worst person on the planet. And uh, uh, I think that uh, it's hard, but I don't know by some reason, you know, like I, I can, in general, I, now I, 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 I only like building one more project, but I don't want to build any, anything else in future. Why? Because first of all, you can meet your time. Second, you take a lot of risks. Third one, you are, uh, how to say, uh, I mean, really like uh, burn yourself, you know, like, and uh, I think, you know, like uh, uh, in my uh, case, you know, like I in general couldn't stop myself, you know, like when I launched P2P.org or when I helped, for example, some other people, you know, like to launch a new projects. And I think that when you do, when you're a venture investor, you're a much more happy person because you're always, you know, like successful. You're always, you know, like can give a good advice, you know, like it's much better position, you know, like, and it's much better for your, you know, like mine. So I think later, you know, like, and I also did a lot of investments, more than 150, you know, like, and I, I under, it's much in my particular view, much more easy work and much more about happiness. Because if you in general help some startup and they're successful, so you're also successful as an investor, you know, like if they fail, I mean, you lose money. It's not a lot of pain. But if you're a builder, each new project, you know, like it's like you are going on, you know, like arena, you know, like in general in public space and start to fighting, you know, like you can remember how we started validation, you know, like when we in general, it was first Cosmos game of uh, stakes, you know, like initially it was 100 different validators and then so like it was Certos that's not exist yet uh, already, yeah, uh, uh, Hendrik, a great guy and others, you know, like they all start fight with each other and try to show why they are better, do some marketing and some other story. And it, uh, first of all, you know, like I think I was super lucky because I have a good partners, you know, like for example, in 2020, Vasily joined my team and he in general did a big impact, you know, like on the success of all these companies, you know, like, and uh, I think that, sir, uh, yeah. And for me, you know, like how it's happened. So I think it's a lot of ideas. I think that market is fully, uh, how to say, like uh, has a lot of space for new ideas, you know, like, and for example, you know, like what Mark Andreessen tells that, you know, like everybody, told that everybody in 2000 or in 1990, for example, when the internet were, or just happened, you know, like everybody understood that uh, like everybody will need Zoom, you know, like or like Skype or something like video calls, you know, like, and then you wait when their technology will enable you that that exists, you know, like that can, that can happen, you know, like, and so, and there, I think that it's always a lot of space what you can build and the question is why you're building like this project not another and for me you know like it was different stories sometimes i just 
came from my values, like in P2P.org, you know, like I really understand that I want to understand blockchains better. I didn't want to build a business. And second, I want to, in general, to invest better. Yes. And second was that I want to, I, I wanted to keep blockchains decentralized and censorship resistant. And that's why I launched P2P.org. Then sometimes, you know, like, for example, when I contribute to, for example, launch of Neutron, you know, like, it was just a story that, I mean, this team lose current work, you know, like, and I help them with the idea that I would build, you know, like, uh, because I think that Cosmos, for example, ecosystem didn't have a own virtual machine. And if Cosmos Hub will have own virtual machine, in general, maybe it will find, find a... Uh, uh, product market fit better than any now. So it was like an experiment and just hell. So, you know, like always is different. And uh, I think that maybe I have an ambition to build some big projects with or uh, how to say millions of users, you know, like, but from other side, you know, like I still thinking, am I ready? You know, like, am I ready to eat this glass? You know, like, am I ready to fight Again, you know, like, should I do it, you know, like, or I still more help founders, you know, like to deliver these products. So, you know, like you always, and, uh, I, and I think, you know, like it's part of your DNA and uh, it's really, you can from one side really has how to say, to understand what you want. And sometimes it just program in yourself. So you've had, you also have a lot of experience now as an entrepreneur, right? Having built a bunch of different uh, projects in different industries and different types of, right? Centralized companies, decentralized protocols. What, what are your biggest, what are the biggest lessons you learned and the biggest things you do differently today from, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, like I would say that I think every six months that I didn't know anything, you know, like six months before. <laughs> So maybe I, I started super low from my management skills and others, you know, like, but uh, what you really should as there are, if you just start your entrepreneurship, you know, like you should understand that, uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, everybody do mistakes, you know, like, and everybody, uh, you know, like <laughs> in the learning curve, you know, like, and it's no end to this learning curve. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that, uh, what I really like when 10 years ago, I have a super different vision, you know, like, and I even don't remember, you know, like what, how I operate the company, you know, like, and for example, I didn't know how project, product management work, how project management work in general. I thought, okay, project managers are not, doesn't, we don't need project managers because it's not fancy, you know, like we need only product managers and, and in general, you learn that, I mean, first of all, it is already some type of uh, really like a clear way how you can operate the companies, you know, like, but of course, when you are trying to re-implement some of that in comp or not in the companies, in DAOs, in generally, you, you know, like do the same mistakes that's, you know, like previous, you know, like management our uh, experience already did and maybe like already fix it in best practices. And so you make one iteration and then you understand your mistakes and you make a second iteration, you know, like, and you source and you fix some issues and then you do the third iteration. The main goal is that each iteration should be better and you need to reflect, you know, like the mistakes and try to, you know, like fix them. And also what I got that different companies has different cultures, you know, like even in our group, you know, like of companies where I am participating, for example, P2P, Ninja, Lido, some other like uh, projects, you know, like when you, or Neil Foundation, for example, you know, like when you join our offsite or some event, community event, you know, like you feel that the culture, the spirit, the people are really different, you know, like, and I think that uh, the most important things, you know, like you as entrepreneur, is in general to bring right people, you know, like from one side has an idea of, you know, like, and find a product market fit and not, it's impossible to buy it through the product manager or like through BD or other guys, you need to do it by your hands. And the second, you need to build their, I mean, find great people, you know, like that will help you to in general, continue building like uh, this uh, forward. 
And to, to do it, you need to inspire people, you need to have a great vision, a great mission, and in general set up, you know, like processes, you know, like how it will work. But uh, do I have a particular, you know, like, so as I told you, you know, like it's a learning curve, you know, like, and each six months, in six months, I will tell you maybe another story, you know, like what I learned. You mentioned you have to be like hands-on or do it yourself. Like what are the things you feel like you, you really have to do and where you have to be really involved versus things where, you know, it kind of like it works well to have other people handle them. Yeah, you know, like it's a really difficult balance between your delegation and your hands-on. You know, like, for example, I really bad in delegation and I'm really super hands-on. And that's why for people it's really also difficult and also they do the same, you know, like, for example, when they manage their own team. And then it starts to be a problem because if you don't delegate and you control, you can scale, you know, like, and you can grow. And I think that for the right approach, you know, like, to first of all, I mean, we, we can look on our any like uh, organizations that it has a vision, you know, like, and it's really difficult to delegate a vision. You still can, but you know, like, it's difficult to dele dele uh, delegate the vision. Why? Because this, it is sometimes the idea of your founding team, you know, like, and then you have our money, you know, like in general, if it is an organization, then you rate some, you know, like revenue, you know, like, I mean, it should be rate. It doesn't matter if it's Ethereum, Bitcoin, or any other, I still think it should have a business model and generate some fees or like a positive impact in this cybernetic economy, you know, like, and then you have like uh, people, you know, like uh, people who in general, you know, like are uh, execute and building and they're in general contribute their time, you know, like the most biggest assets that they have to success of that, you know, like company or like organization. And I think that what you can delegate, you can delegate, you know, like money and like people, but what you really difficult to delegate is a vision, you know, and uh, uh, that's why you are creating some type of uh, like, uh, I mean, documents or policies, you know, like for example, mission, vision, and uh, purpose document that in general, your long-term objectives, how you see, for example, in 20 or 30 years, you know, like uh, uh, what we need to achieve. And in general, you know, like from this vision, it's much more easy to build a strategy, to understand what is the KPI, some metrics you want to achieve, to bring people, and in general, like deliver some success for organization. You mentioned you're kind of, uh, you're not good at delegation, but I mean, for example, I think P2P.org, right? You guys have a CEO now that's, it's not you anymore. Uh, how do you, like, how has that worked for you to kind of like hand over, to go from being very hands-on to project to having other people manage the day-to-day, the -day, like, has it been hard for you and like what would have been, have been your learnings in that process? Yeah, so great question. Uh, yeah, first of all, Alex uh, Yesen, who is in general like our CEO for P2P, is an amazing guy, you know, like who joined us uh, in CPO position. He didn't know anything about crypto. He's not crypto native, and uh, but he has own talents, you know, like, and uh, I think that in ideal way, you need to structure how you give away a company, you know, like how you, you know, like uh, uh, have or, you know, like decided on key values of your company on the mission, vision, and purpose. You agree on this well, basic foundation. And then you start to give away people, you know, like and our team, you know, like to in general as, as a business. I, I have a couple examples, you know, like how I uh, give away, you know, like our, uh, the company or the organization to CEO. And there sometimes, you know, like it's like swimming, you just need to drop it <laughs> and they need to swim, you know, like and find a way, you know, or maybe it's not the best one, but still, you know, like you should give enough authority and, and, and decision making and in general, give all those things away to, 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 for people to start to operate. 
Uh, and there are, of course, you need to support, you know, like, and for example, in CyberFund, we build a team, uh, we call it strategy team, who help and support, you know, like, our, for example, CEOs or organizational leaders on different levels. For example, for they can help to work with strategy or like with hiring or like with, uh, uh, for example, like some type of uh, other things that uh, CEO need, you know, like are uh, and there, uh, what 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 I think is important is important to build a foundation for the team to hire right people in the beginning, you know, like to have a strong, you know, like values, and uh, then you know, like to find the right person, you know, like and look on the test period, you know, like how uh, he or she performed, you know, like that you trust, you know, like like your baby because companies you know, like, like a baby, uh, that in general, they will deliver the objectives, you know, like, and be a little bit, you know, like, even when you give a company to CEO, you have a different stages, you have a hands-on, you still have a strategic uh, guiding, you have a hands-off, for example, you know, like, it's different stage and different your engagement, you know, like, in uh, this stage. And uh, for me, you know, like, it's like you push your baby out, you know, like, and well, from my experience, it is a lot of things that sir, maybe even work better <laughs> without me, you know, like, uh, because I think that, are, I mean, uh, like when you give a company to, in some level, uh, people or who are, you know, like, are, uh, you know, like, are, who are start to manage their in business, you know, like they have different skills. And maybe they're better execution, or maybe they're better in B2B sales, and they start in general build some pieces of the company that you didn't think will be really valuable, you know, like from your vision initially. Maybe let's talk a little bit about Lido, because I mean, Lido is like, a, it's again like a different uh, type of organization, right? As a decentralized, uh, like a DAO. Tell us a bit, like, what was sort of the, the origin story? Of Lido, like how did it come about, and what was the early phase? Yeah, like? I think I, I think Brian, you also were part of that, you know. Like I, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if any great project is started in Telegram group as a Telegram group, you know, like in generally we, we I came to Vasily you now, like again, and say, okay, so we need to win game of stakes. In the same time, we need to be the the biggest validator in Polkadot. And we also need to launch liquid staking to save, you know, like uh, uh, Ethereum from centralization. <laughs> and Vasily said, okay, we can do only one. And then we in general, you know, like uh, took two main prizes in game of stakes in Cosmos. In the same time, we took about 25% market share of staking in Polkadot by some accident. And we also came to all our friends and competitors, you know, like usually people are, you know, like has different, how to say, relationships with the competitors, you know, like, but we came to all validators, you know, like, uh, yeah, I will even start a little bit early, you know, like when we came to you, you know, like, I think it was Web3 conference and we tried to build a project called DeFi API, you know, like it was, I don't remember, 2018 or 2019 and nobody, you know, like, it took, nobody even know the word DeFi back then, you know, like, so, I mean, DeFi wasn't popular. And we came to you and said, okay, guys, we in general want to build an aggregator of different validators, I like API, that you can put inside of the wallet. I, I, I think it was Cosmos Station or something like that. And we signed five validators. I think it was your company, it was uh, Certus, it was Stakefish, and it was maybe a couple others. And in general, it was uh, not super successful, you know, like product is gaining rate, I don't know, $10. <laughs> and in general, we had a revenue share. That's why we pay you this $1 of revenue. And in general, but what it's built in general, it's built some relationships because we've spoken with you guys, with our competitors and also like friends. We in general came with uh, some idea, we signed agreements and we deliver it, you know, like, yeah, it was not successful. And then we came to you again in, I think, 2020 and said, guys, uh, I mean, in general, Ethereum will be centralized. Uh, all these exchanges, they have a priority because the LTV lifetime value for the user is much higher. So they earn more money than self-custody validators. And we can't do anything. Of course, it will be some solo stakers, but not a lot. And it will be biggest exchanges that acquire users 
by just giving staking for free. And it was a big opportunity for them. I don't know why they didn't do it for free, but uh, uh, yeah. And uh, we came to all, I think, five different uh, validators and in general created a group and uh, even had a call and pitch, let's in general build a DAO, put in the DAO 50% of the tokens and other 50% will give to people who are uh, uh, oh, I, in general, split between us, yes. And uh, in general, we'll finance from the DAO this, or, you know, like our fees or on our like, uh, development of the product. And as I remember, nobody supported this idea. Why? Some people thought about regulation, some people thought about other problems, you know, like, and in general, nobody signed in, in the, this initial version of the DAO. And then, you know, like uh, I came to Vasily and said, we still need to build it because, you know, like Ethereum will be super centralized and we need to find the resources. And even I, so I will take all the risk in general, like invest my own personal money, you know, like to build the initial version of LIDAR. And it uh, uh, doesn't matter. We don't need investors. Let's build a product. And uh, in general, we start to build a product, you know, like so we find three different teams are, uh, I mean, uh, who develop smart contracts, you know, like we wrote a spec with, uh, in general, we have, uh, Vasily has friends, you know, like who now like one of the core contributors and founding team of LIDA, you know, like uh, Evgeny Pshinichny, like uh, Victor, Sam, and they wrote, a sp how, in general, you know, like I describe how it can work, you know, like they wrote a, sp a spec, you know, like with Vasily, Vasily review it, and we settle how initial version of LIDA can work, you know, like. And uh, we came to, to three development company and in general split the development of the solution because one of the issue was because you didn't have a way to hold uh, Ethereum stake from Beacon Chain in smart contracts in Ethereum L1. So you need to develop some uh, distributed custody. And it was not a lot of solution of distributed custody. The project was super complex, but we had our cryptographers in Neil team and in general Neil team contributed to some crypto library and also we had our we also used some Tendermint you know like in, uh, maybe you even don't know about that <laughs> so in general <laughs> oh, you know what yeah so in general we use Tendermint you know like in a way to split the this key to many parties and that nobody know the whole key and so we found 11 you know like uh, contributors who in general joined initial setup team and it was for example Mick from like uh, from uh, Curve, it was Chorus, it was uh, for example guys from uh, Celestia uh, Mustafa, nobody know about Celestia back then and it was some other like uh, 10 grade or 11 it was Rune from Maker a, 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 a different other, other 11 people in general they may took this responsibility, you know, like, and hold this, you know, like, our distributed custody before, we, I mean, the special feature were delivered in Ethereum mainnet. And uh, in general, you know, like, in 2020, the code ha happened, you know, like, uh, and uh, the LIDAR DAO was deployed, you know, like, in, it was initial validators, five validators, you know, like, I think all those validators who didn't want to participate in the beginning, joining, you know, like, LIDAR when it was delivered as a product. And it's great that, you know, like Lido found a product market fit. Now it, I think it has more than two, I, I even don't know how many our validators are running through Lido, but it's more than 200 and it used different technologies, SSV, Obol, you know, like, and, uh, uh, and uh, some other stuff. And in general, it's really contribute to Ethereum, you know, like decentralization. And I think, you know, like Lido is already delivered part of the mission. It's still, you know, like big, things on roadmap like dual governance and also like uh, some other pieces like permissionless taking. But finally, you know, like what LIDAR was driven, LIDAR was driven by vision, by mission, you know, like, and, uh, and also, you know, like it was driven by our early mistakes, you know, like if I told you, you know, like we run a fund and we were custody of these funds, you know, like we really feel pain. And we really want to always build some products that is self-custody, that is decentralized, and in general, you know, like, uh, that can work, you know, like, uh, without people, and uh, uh, in general, bring and deliver the mission. And I think LIDAR found a product market fit, and in general, 
really adoption because it delivers a value to the, the uh, as a middleware to the users. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's uh, still probably like the largest DAO in some ways. I mean, certainly in terms of like the, the TVL in there. And, uh, and I think it's cool. I still, there's like so much innovation happening in Lido and I think so many, uh, what do you think is, I mean, you mentioned dual governance uh, or like, what, what do you feel like are the biggest changes that you would like to see to Lido in the future? Yeah, it's a good question. Are uh, for me, first of all, I mean, Lido driven by a mission and vision, you know, like, and there are. I think that uh, from one side, you know, like this organization can try to build uh, new products, you know, like for example, like restaking, you know, like when it's happened. But uh, uh, from other side, you know, like uh, wider prioritize permissionless staking and uh, dual governance. Why? Because I think that Ethereum is a root chain of a digital world, you know, like, and generally. You know, like it's a big common good, you know, like for all people in the world. And uh, I think that uh, we can fucked up on security here, you know, like, and we can lose it. It's a big chance for everyone, you know, like to have Ethereum, to use Ethereum. And uh, I, I think we are super lucky, you know, like, and I think that uh, what is wider working uh, I mean, in general, Lido is a middleware, it's smart contracts, but it is a DAO and also like a contributors who get some uh, like grants uh, to deliver. And in general, contrib contributors are working on, I think, that are in general how it works, you know, like uh, any person, you or anyone who listens to this podcast, you know, like once a year can send a, like a, a proposal. It's called in general, uh, the framework called Goose, like a, uh, and uh, that co collect, you know, like uh, objectives, you know, like what Lido will do next year or next three years. And uh, then, you know, like it is a voting. So DAO voting on this proposal. You know, like, for example, let's build restaking or let's build like dual governance and keep on uh, an eye on security or let's uh, do permissionless staking. So anyone can make a proposal of strategy. For example, the last proposal was by Hasu, you know, like, and in, uh, later during this year, it was Regus, in general, a new proposal. And uh, in general, it is objectives uh, and main uh, products are decided by voting of token holders. And then these token holders, they distribute grants to like development company and this development company are delivering features. And I think that the current uh, proposal is about that we need to deliver dual governance. Why? Because it is a vector of attacks that somebody can buy a lot of LIDAR tokens, you know, like, and try to still upgrade the smart contracts and still, you know, like, is, or, you know, like, uh, from the DAO. And this is one of the vector of attack. And it is, a, I think, already called in uh, uh, on audits, you know, like, and I think it's really important to, uh, to, de to develop this feature. And another is permissionless staking, that in general, you know, like solo stakers can use ETH or, you know, like in LIDAR to, in general, uh, run their own node with only four ETH, you know, like. And uh, I, I think the current uh, LIDAR community of solo stakers is growing, you know, like it is a lot of application and it is a big demand on it. And I think that LIDAR is a, I mean, mission-driven organization with only like simple, like, mission to make to keep you know like ethereum uh secure decentralized and censorship resistant and in general if you have any proposals you know like what line can fund as a DAO, you know like to keep ethereum decentralized censorship resistant and uh, uh like uh, uh secure you know like you can in general propose it during the next uh application you know like her uh, time, you know, like, and propose, you know, like, and maybe LIDA will add it to the, uh, if it will be voted, it will be added and granted will be distributed to deliver it. So you, you're also very involved in Solana early on. Uh, you know, I think today we see a lot of attention on Solana. So we see a lot of attention on Ethereum. We see quite diverging visions as well. Like, what are your thoughts on, um, you know, Solana versus Ethereum, like their visions of scaling the future and, 
yeah, like w which one are you? Where are you bullish, bearish, and for what reasons? Yeah, you know, I'm, first of all, I'm bullish on both, and uh, for me. Uh, I initially, you know, like uh, invested in Ethereum ICO and then we invested in Polkadot, Cosmos, you know, like, uh, and Solana was one of the projects that we invested in the seed stage. And uh, uh, for us, you know, like why we did it in general, we could in general stay in Bitcoin, like a lot of Bitcoin maximalists, you know, like, and just, you know, like believe that the God Satoshi Nakamoto solve all our issues, you know, like, but this is a craziness, you know, like Bitcoin is a calculator. Or like it is a meme coin, you know, like I'm not a big believer in Bitcoin. I think it can change, evolve if it will be a crisis. And it is a lot of innovation, you know, like uh, now uh, in the world by uh, like great teams like Alpha, like uh, Taproot Wizards and some others. But uh, still, you know, like current stage of Bitcoin, that it is a lot of maximalist and a lot of like uh, beliefs. You know, it's like a religion more. And for us, you know, like, why we believe in cybernetic economy and we believe in efficiency and efficiency created by economy. And there in general, I mean, we invested in Ethereum because we understood that it will be like how the micro economy where like different organizations, applications in general will generate fees and um, inside of the Ethereum. And, uh, uh, but you know, like it is a vision of our Ethereum Foundation, Vitalik Buterin, and in general Ethereum community, how Ethereum should achieve it, you know, like, is it the right vision? I don't know, I think so, yes, and I in general believe I really love what Ethereum is doing. But uh, it was different time in Ethereum uh, history, you know, like, and it was different speed of development, you know, like, before we remember days when they didn't have a lot of, for example, progress because of the growth or like because of the funding issues or because some other issues, you know, like, and I think that we invested in some other projects like Polkadot and Cosmos that also contribute to how, yeah, uh, and Solana and uh, many others and how in general, like blockchain space looks like now. They also did a lot of innovations and in general, they push Ethereum to go faster. Because if you don't have a competitors, if you don't have a, you know, like, a, or you don't have a market, this is one issue. Or you, in general, uh, it's also bad for you because you uh, start to stagnate and you don't start to grow faster. And I think that Ethereum pushed Solana forward, Solana pushed Ethereum forward. But who is the winner is, uh, like, uh, people, you know, like, that is important. People good the best service, the most secure service, the, the most cheap service, the most fast service, you know, like, and uh, that's why, you know, like I bullish on both and uh, it is a chance that, you know, like computation will be a commodity in future. Maybe like it will be like a lot of cheap computations. Uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, I still think that any blockchain or any project should run not because it's meme coin or because it's money, like we call it money and it's give you how to say valuation that is not baked by revenue. I think each project should be like uh, really baked by real fees or by real economic activity. And uh, for me, you know, like how the future will look like, I don't know. But what I really believe the best money will be the best uh, assets that generate the biggest amount of fees and will be the most stable one. Yeah. I mean, in terms of generating the biggest amount of fees, it does seem like this Ethereum roadmap is sort of like making it hard for that to happen, you know, with, with all of the activity happening, going to layer twos, layer threes, things like that. I think, first of all, we need to make a calculation, you know, like we are, I mean, we are working on it. And second, our equation is, you know, like, it can be part of how to say go to market when you put the fees down, you know, like, and I think that we are now, you know, like uh, today is uh, like uh, September, you know, like uh, 2024 and we are in a stage, you know, like uh, where it's either a new wave is coming and this new, new wave is not coming like because of the only global market, of course, global market and uh, are they really impact crypto really much because crypto is still a risky asset but what is important and if recession will happen i think it will be super bad for crypto 
But what is important, you know, like all these uh, things are, in general, we are on a new wave of the projects. And what are these projects and why they will exist? First of all, because the fees on rollups going down and if the fees in Ethereum going down, it means that we'll have more and more different type of applications that can find a product market fit by using blockchains. And it's super great. The second, we have innovation like chain abstraction that in general, you know, like, you know, we have all these ideas in 20, I don't know, 16, you know, like that UX should be good, you know, like in general, like in Web2. And it's only like happening, uh, you know, like right now that we can build that UX right now with projects like One Balance, like Infinix and so on. And I think that, I mean, what is important, you know, like current change of Ethereum economy, you know, like current price on DA and growth of rollups, this is enabler, you know, like to... In, in, uh, in general, adopt, or uh, you know, like, or uh, and in general, grow, and uh, you know, like, and onboard one billion more people, and it's super great. Will it again start to burn? Is we'll see. So I, I feel like one one thing is so you've been in crypto for a long time, right? So you have a lot of projects that you kind of involved in, and they, they take up a lot of like you know your attention and energy. I'm curious, like knowing everything you know today and with your skills today, if you sort of, you know, if you had like a blank slate, you didn't have to worry about P2P, Lido, Cyber Fund, all of those. What, 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 where would you go? Where would you pay? Like, what are the sort of problems that you would want to spend your time on and research and maybe start, start something uh, in that area? Uh, you know, like, uh, I mean, it's a lot of, a lot of different spaces, you know, like, uh, from biotech, uh, that is in general will impact us uh, pretty soon, uh, to AI, to cosmos, you know, like it's a lot of interesting areas. I don't know what would I choose, you know, like, and why, uh, uh I think that, uh, I really think about digital identity and in general, how people will operate their, like how to say soul or their like uh, new representation in digital world. That is a really like make me a lot of thoughts around that, you know, like, and I really think that we didn't see uh, yet, you know, like our uh, successful di digital identity projects. So I think I would go in such space. I, I also like Orbit Vision, you know, like, uh, about how you can keep your digital identity and data and how operation system can work in future. So what I think is important is that we are coming to like singularity you now, like, and the question is what will be after and are, you know, like, and how to keep it really good for people and, you know, like for everyone, it doesn't matter where you born, you know, like I think 20 years ago, it was much where the situation now you have internet, you have a lot of online education and you are start to live better and better and better. And what I really worry that it will regress by some reason that some people will have too much power, you know, like that is worry me more. And what I really like want to achieve by like cyber fund, by allocating, you know, like capital and also my time by building my products and in general, like are a way where each person on the planet will have the same, you know, like when they born the same, uh, like, uh, uh, terms, you know, like, and in the same, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, opportunities. So I know AI is also a focus for you guys at Cyberfront. And obviously it sort of is the thing that, uh, a lot of people are, you know, deeply focused on. I mean, one of the things that's really like stood out to me, or, or one of the things that's like striking about AI, at least so far, is that it seems to be like an incredibly centralizing technology, you know, where you have like a few companies that are able to pour like huge amounts of resources, right? Like many billions of dollars into, you know, training a particular model. And, you know, it looks like the amount of money these companies are spending on these models also going up like very dramatically. So go, getting higher and higher and then have basically this like super intelligence, which 
maybe will be owned by, you know, a few companies, at least that is like one scenario that seems not unlikely if you just sort of look at the, the current trends. And, then, and of course, at the same time, right, in crypto and the, the, the core idea is around decentralizing ownership, decentralizing power, decentralizing control. Do you, how do you think these two uh, forces will sort of, what happens when they come together? What happens when AI really breaks through, starts to influence everything? And, uh, you know, is, is there, how would that intersect with crypto? Yeah, I agree, you know, like that AI start to be super dangerous, you know, like from way how it's really growing fast, you know, like and how much power it gives to people who in general can create this uh, new type of models that will in general will recreate much how to say or in general be more uh, in, in general can create this like our uh, artificial intelligence that is uh, bigger than humans you know like and uh, uh, for me you know like uh, I really don't believe in regulation you know like uh, why because it's inefficient it's slow and it's impossible to regulate you know, like uh, current AI companies do not make, uh, you know, like some type of uh, uh, some type of uh, technology that will be super powerful. And uh, I, I think that uh, also like it looks like the companies understand that they can optimize algorithms, they have data, they can buy more energy and they can buy more computers like Google, you know, like in 1998, you know, like they understand, they already understand the secret source of success. And uh, I think that, uh, but I really believe, you know, like, like with blockchains, you know, like that uh, maybe I am a dreamer and I'm definitely like an optimist. And I really believe that new technologies in our will evolve that and are in some way we will find a way how, you know, like to build, uh, I mean, a, a better model, you know, like that will be or regulated by technology or distributed and in general, you know, like controlled, you know, like. And uh, for me, you know, when I speak about blockchains, I think what we shouldn't forget that what blockchain is about, for example, when you look on Bitcoin, you can look at what Bitcoin is doing, it's doing regulation, you know, like in general, Bitcoin introduced technology regulation. They achieve the regulation, how you can regulate the supply by technology, by piece of code that distributed between people. And uh, I think, uh, you know, like, the new type of regulation when we look on decentralized autonomous organization you can look on lidar that it's a piece of smart contract the middleware that in general you know like regulate the way how different engines work with each other and i really believe in technology regulations that's why we invested in metalex and gabriel shapiro you know him well you're my synchro tech great super great report together a long time ago and uh in general, you know, like Gabriel Sapir is one of the most talented person, you know, like in crypto lore space, you know, and that I know. And uh, uh, and in general, what he's doing, he's building this works. In general, how to work, how to merge regulation that we have in blockchains and that we can build as a software with the current organizations. And there, I really think that. If and that is also part of the cybernetic economy that we call, you know, like it's in general when you build a process and this regulated not by bureaucracy or like by people or because the people should do it like that, but it's when regulated by code. And there, I think it will be a day when we we can in general regulate these models or like this power by some type of you know, like regulation, maybe on chain or like through blockchain. And in general, crypto AI is there, how to say, we, when we start to look by cyber fund, you know, like in general, we, we, are, we had it in our initial thesis in 2014, you know, like, but we start to spend more time on it. Of course, I mean, in, and for us, it's not short term. Our goal is to build a competence in the next 10 years. When you start to look in the eye and crypto AI and uh, AI, so it is three markets, you know, like one is AI, one is crypto in AI, and one is AI in crypto. And all of these markets has a big opportunity, you know, like, of course, AI is growing right now, but uh, we see how agents can use, you know, like 
from payments to like buying more uh, execution uh, and are in general how you can build economy. And uh, I think that why, you know, like crypto in uh, AI is super closed is because it's also about mecha mechanism design, you know, like because what is a crypto and why it works because it's in general, uh, it's a mechanism that constructed by cryptography, by code and some other things in coordination, you know, like, and the same when you build uh, some ML and, you know, like AI, it's also, I think that when we will add some economy inside of AI, you know, like, and uh, make it more open, I think we will see a lot of benefits in that space too. And uh, I'm curious about the, the AI in crypto bucket. How, how do you think that will? Yeah. Uh, uh, in general, you know, like if you speak of AI in crypto, first of all, you know, like, uh, I mean, uh, we have some, for example, when we look in uh, uh, why uh, crypto need AI, you know, like, for example, our, I mean, we invested in a project called Pond, you know, like, and they are building a model, you know, like, especially for uh, based and trained on the crypto data, you know, like, and so in general, you can use AI in all, like, for example, it is a lot of, pro I don't be believer in it, but of course we can uh, really understand that it is a, uh, a lot of, uh, how to say, a lot of uh, trading is done through ML, you know, like, and it is a lot of funds that use ML to do successful trading. And we can say that, you know, like it will be like some AI models, you know, like that will in general generate you some strategies that can be used in the crypto, you know, like, and there are also, you know, like our, um, in case of for uh, some type of, uh, you know, like security, you know, like cybersecurity, AI also can do some type of work around that. So it's a lot of intersection, you know, like, and uh, it's a lot of projects that can be used and find the product market fit, you know, like are in this intersection. And I, you know, like, I, I think it's a lot of bullshit in AI, but uh, it is, a, I mean, it's like in any technology that start found a product market fit and AI definitely found a product for our product market fit. We see that, uh, and Trophic, you know, like did the 1 billion revenue, you know, like uh, this year. That is a lot. That's super fast. And uh, uh, I mean that uh, it is a lot of uh, really like things uh, that AI is delivering in different sectors of technology and crypto will be one of them. Yeah, absolutely. For CyberFund, uh, aside from the crypto AI intersection, are there other some other areas of crypto that you feel, you know, they need more attention and investment and there are areas that, you know, other people are neglecting. Yeah. You know, like what we do with cyber fund, we try usually to invest with early, you know, like new narratives, for example, how we invest in Ethereum, like Cosmos or like Celestian or Solana or like Aguilar, you know, like why because we found some type of narrative that can in general create more efficiency you know like on the market or like it's super differentiated for example ethereum is a super slow blockchain and Solana is super fast you know like and they have super different narratives and uh, uh i mean for us you know like the same is in ai and crypto ai and other areas what we try to find out we, we try to find you know like the technology that First of all, contribute to our vision of cybernetic economy, you know, like that make more equal people for all humans, you know, like, and uh, in general that contribute to our uh, efficiency and access. And uh, it can be, and for example, in the crypto, we are super believers, believers in chain abstraction right now. Why? Because it's so few UX, you know, like, and in general, it's make your funnel better you can transact you know like and trade any assets to any assets you know like in one click and in general it's significant improvement you know like to bring a lot of great new products you know like and there uh, i think that there you know like then we look on computation you know like current computation is super expensive we are you know like our ethereum like is not super fast computer you know like 
and the current computa computation are expensive with roll-ups still expensive and we think that we will need one million more x computation you know like on chain or trustless and this is another field so it's a lot of for example identity i mean we need to find a way how we can in general keep our data private you know like and has benefits from identity because who is has all benefits from your identity right now it's large corporation they start to use this identity, they start to trade this identity, you know, like, and uh, I think if you're going to, like, this single, uh, single, uh, singularity, you know, like, I mean, we need to find a way how not only survive, but how to live well, you know, like, how to live in the digital world, you know, like, how to, you know, like, get more people uh, inside, you know, like, and get that are you know like are uh, get value from it and uh, so yeah so in general we try to find this new narrative that enable you know like the growth of the cybernetic on our economy that accelerated you now like uh and still not an evil for example if it is their open ai that is a closed source you know like that is not where we will allocate our capital definitely yeah, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Constantine. It's it's been great to talk a little bit through your history and like your use and your learnings. I think you you've had like such a tremendous uh, impact on the blockchain space. Um, and I mean, I know many of you are uh, many listeners. I'm sure uh, are aware of you, but I'm sure equally many of you, you know, have have not heard about you and didn't know sort of like the influence and the role you've played. So yeah, thank you so much for coming on and, and, and thanks for all you've done. It's, it's been really great to, to know you and to work together and I'm excited to, I have no doubt that, you know, you'll continue to have a massive impact on crypto and on this, uh, si realizing the cybernetic economy mission in the next, uh, next decade that's ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Brian, very much, you know, like, and I hope to keep building together more and more. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks so much, Constantine.